So the next, uh, the next project for my, uh, my little series here of building blocks, I guess they're kind of like Lego, RF Legos, we'll call them RF Legos. Uh, I figured uh, an oscillator would be good. And I've got this uh, collection of oscillators. Now, every time I uh, find a piece of junk equipment and there's an oscillator can in it, I always remove it because it's easy to remove and you know you can always use it sometime later. Some of these oscillators I bought at the junk store. Uh, but anyway, I've got a nice collection of oscillators, obviously, but most of them are, you never seem to have the right frequency that you need, right? But I have all kinds of frequencies here. A lot of them are low frequency. I kind of wanted a high frequency for the, um, for the RF type stuff. And I had one that was 125 megahertz and I almost used that one, but then I remembered that my oscilloscope only goes to 100 megahertz. So I thought it, if I if I had something a little lower, then I could at least use it on my oscilloscope as well. So I found a 70, uh, so a 70 megahertz. So I figured uh, that would be great. So um, I didn't film the um, build, but here's some pictures. Um, so I put the oscillator inside the uh, unit and pins, let's see, pins 14, 7 and 14 are power and ground, or ground, 14 is power, 7 is ground, and then pin 8 is the output, and so it all fits nice and neat into the uh, little case that I have. And I built it up, and I tried it out, and um, I noticed that it worked great, but uh, I, I dawned on me that a lot of times you want a, uh, an AC coupled signal, not not a DC. So the way that those little things work is they you apply five volts to them uh, on the little BNC connector that I've added, and it gives you signals between zero and five volts. And a lot of times microwave circuitry or RF circuitry doesn't like uh, DC offsets or DC voltages in general. So uh, in this photograph, I've added a little 0.1 uh, microfarad capacitor. So I've tack tacked that in there. So now it is AC coupled to the outside world. So now it works great. So um, let's, um, let's go ahead and take the unit here and we'll take it over to the uh, HP and measure its output, okay? So before I connect it to anything like a tiny SA, um, I like to be able to use equipment that I know I'm not gonna blow up because <laughs> I don't wanna blow up my tiny SA. Now I know that the, um, no, let's go over to the HP equipment, I'll show you. All right, so I've got a bunch of ports on the front of the, uh, of the test set here. Uh, this is not a spectrum analyzer. This is a radio uh, a radio service monitor. So it has some additional features that you won't see on spectrum analyzers. So, uh, so one of the things is never put power into your spectrum analyzer. You will blow it up, okay? And I did a video on that about attenuators. Make sure you don't blow up anything up. But it's not just the tiny SA. It's any spectrum analyzer. You have to be very, very, very careful about what you input. Now, this one has both... Uh, has a spectrum analyzer input, and that's uh, and that's co this connector here. Okay, it's labeled antenna in. Okay, so uh, this input here is the spec spectrum analyzer input, and it's labeled right here. Do not exceed 200 milliwatts. Okay, so it's very sensitive as well. Uh, it's still a bit more, maybe even more robust than a lot of spectrum analyzers, but it is uh, very limited. Now this connector over here, this big N connector. Okay, this is a. Uh, this is a big N-type connector, and I've got an adapter on here. Uh, so this connector here um, is labeled, let's see, I can't read it with that on, with that on there, is labeled uh, max power 60 watts. You go 60 watts? So inside the spectrum analyzer is a big uh, 60 dB, uh, 60 watt attenuator. Uh, so it already has it built into the machine. Um, so it can handle up to 60 watts. Now, because you have that big attenuator on the input, it's not as sensitive. So that's why they give you this connector over here, the antenna input connector. Let's turn this thing on. And then this one is for output use. This, this connector can either be input or output, kind of like a teeny SA. It can be input or output. And uh, this is input only, this is output only. Okay, so that's the way that works. So we have this hooked up. Uh, let me get my tiny S, I mean, uh, my 70 megahertz oscillator over here. Okay, 
So we're gonna go into a mode here, so that's it. Let me check the frame here. Okay. Okay, so it's good. This thing has a whole bunch of buttons on it, and it's got a button, so let's say an RX and a one TX. So this is a transmitter, so we wanna test transmit. We're gonna hit the transmit button. Now the transmit button brings up a uh, display here. It's gonna measure its frequency, it's gonna measure its power, its deviation, its error to frequencies and stuff. So let's, uh, let's hook this thing up and see what it says about it. This is exactly what this machine was made for. Okay, so when I plug it in, you see it went right to 70 megahertz. So it knows it's, it knows it's transmitting at 70 megahertz. And it says wattage is 0 0.016 watts. Okay, let's look at that in dB. So we can highlight the unit here and I'll change it to dBm. It's 12 dBm plus 12 dBm. So that's quite a bit of power. And right now it's measuring FM deviation, which there isn't any. There's a little bit of fluctuation, so it's measuring a tiny bit. Um, and let's see, we can measure AM. Let's see if there's any AM on the signal. And there's 0.5% fluctuation on the AM. I don't know. Anyway, it's small. So it's, it's basically that. So the other thing that now we can do is we can go into spectrum analyzer mode. And since it measured 70 megahertz, it automatically put the center frequency at 70 megahertz, 70.002 to be exact. Um, so it looks good. Now we were measuring plus 12 dBm with the power measurement and here we're measuring 9 dBm as the peak level. Um, but remember there's a whole bunch of harmonics that get added up into the total output power. So let's, uh, let's, let's do a bigger span here. Let's set the, let's make it look sort of like a, um, a tiny SA. A tiny SA goes between zero and 350. So let's hit, let's make the center frequency 175 and the span 350. So that's the picture that we should see on the, um, on the tiny SA. And let's take a look at a, a couple of the harmonics. So, so this um, 70 megahertz has a bunch of harmonics on it and it's basically a square wave. And it goes, it's a rounded off square wave and then it goes through a, uh, 0.1 microfarad capacitor, which rounds it off a bit more, but it is basically a square wave. So we're getting a full harmonic content here. So we can go to marker. We can do a uh, peak measurement here. Uh, so the first peak is at uh, 70 megahertz and it is at nine, plus nine dBm. And then we have one at 140 megahertz. So uh, double the frequency it's at minus seven. So, um, and then we have one at 210, minus five. So anyway, there we go. So these levels are obviously too high to put into the um, tiny SA. So I'm going to test the tiny SA with a attenuator in place. And so I'm going to take this 20, 20 dB attenuator. I'm going to put that in series with the oscillator. It's a 20 dB attenuator, so our plus 12 should be minus 12. So let's go back to transmit test and it's flashing and that's because it's too low of a level so now that we have too low of a level this can't measure the absolute power the absolute power actually goes into a thermistor it's actually a nice power meter built into this thing but the spectrum analyzer will still work um, so we can go back to our original peak and it's at minus 12 so instead of being up at plus 12 it's now down at minus 11.28 so remember that at minus 11.28, and then the next peak is at minus 26. So 11 and 26. All right, so let's go, now that we're safe, 
We know that the levels are within what the tiny SA can do. Let's go over and see what the tiny SA says. All right, we're back at the tiny SA, and we're going to put our uh, oscillator and our attenuator together, and we're going to input that into the tiny SA. We're getting a similar looking picture. And we had uh, minus 11 and minus 26. Now we have minus 5.8. That's not measuring very good. And the other, the other peak, uh, let's see here, marker, search marker, max rate. The other one is at minus 23. So they're both about, uh, well, this one's 3 dB too high, and the other one was six, seven, eight, nine, yeah, uh, about 3 dB. So it's about 3 dB off, so I'm not quite sure why. Um, but anyway, it's close enough uh, for, for looking at relative stuff. I'm not looking for absolute accuracy for the nano VNA, just relative stuff. That seems to be doing a good job. So anyway, so now I have a 70 megahertz, um, a 70 megahertz uh, oscillator. I've labeled it already plus 12 dBm, and so it goes into my uh, RF Lego kit.